welcome to the ITU Studio in Geneva. I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Emmanuel Latouze, who is the director of the Data Pop Alliance. Emmanuel, welcome to the studio. Thank you. I'd like to start by, by asking you a little bit about uh, this symposium, the World Telecommunication and in, in, in ICT Indicator Symposium in 2018. Why is this symposium important to your organization and, uh, and the ICT sector in general? Um, well, so it's the first time that I come to the, uh, to the symposium. Uh, I've been meaning to come uh, a couple of times before. Um, and I think it was the right time because, uh, I mean, ITU has been pretty involved over the past couple of years, increasingly involved in a, a not just its core business of ICT, but increasingly in things uh, around data, big data, and, and, uh, and AI. Uh, and and it, it brings together uh, people that I don't usually, or whom I don't usually, like, you know, interact with. Uh, so that's why I decided to come and I'm pleased to be here. Now the ICT sector and in particular emerging technologies such as uh, AI, artificial intelligence and IoT, the Internet of Things, are generating huge data streams. How do you think this data can be harnessed to promote the development of an inclusive information society? And let's also d discuss, is this amount of data a threat to privacy? Um, I mean, historically we know that technology all technologies have these like two sides, the bright, dark side of technology. Some people say that technology is neutral uh, because the sun might be zero. Uh, I don't think technology is ever neutral. It's always used to some end. Uh, it's uh, an enabler uh, of your you know, of human intent and, uh, and, 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 and capacity or an amplifier. Um, so of course there are legitimate concerns uh, about privacy, uh, about uh, growing digital divides and biases and prejudice uh, being embedded in code. Um, so, and, and I think these need to be unpacked, recognized, uh, addressed. Uh, at the same time, I don't think we should be cynical uh, about uh, how much technology and data can uh, or could, could help. Um, it's, we don't live in a world that uh, um, is, I think, very fair. Um, We've made progress on, on different SDGs, for instance, like poverty uh, has come down quite a bit in the past uh, decade, uh, but there's still a long way to go uh, to make our societies uh, fairer, uh, more just, uh, our processes more transparent, more efficient, and I do think that data uh, and AI uh, can help. And let's talk about being fair. The 50-50 uh, milestone for internet use has been surpassed now. However, there are still far too many people around the world that are still waiting to reap the benefits of the digital economy. What more do you think that uh, can be done to bring pe more people online? Uh, so, I mean, first of all, I think increasingly people are accessing and will be accessing uh, the internet through mobile phones or so not the you know, typical way that they used to uh, 10 years ago. Um, and, um, and I think they are already those who have access to the internet um, or to like digital networks uh, already like reaping a lot of, of, of benefits. I mean, mobile money, like mobile transfers, uh, are really uh, you know t taking off. Um, and um, but but yes, I mean the risk of uh, of I increasing um, inequities, uh, including through the use of the data or the misuse of the data being generated uh, by those services is a major concern in a world that is already uh, very, very unequal. So what to do about it? I think, um, I think education is, a, is a still a, probably the most powerful tool that humans have. So educate people, uh, teach them what is being done with their data, uh, how they could also weigh in, uh, and provide systems and projects and channels uh, for them to actually engage. Um, and so one example is to do, uh, uh, just to organize some events or, uh, I don't believe in hackathons for the sake of hackathons, but it's s those events that can actually make people more, more, more aware. Um, I talked today about a project called OPAL, which is the Open Algorithms Project in Colombia and Senegal that aims not just at building uh, a technological platform for querying those data, but also governance, a uh, set of governance standards for people to actually uh, be able to say what they want their data to be used for. Now you've been speaking here at the symposium, obviously you've been listening to. I wanted to find out from you what key takeaways you think people will come away from here? Um, I mean, from the, 
from the discussion and the questions so after the presentation, um, I think things are like changing, maturing. Uh, there is there is still this sort of like simmering fear, uh, which which is in great part legitimate about as I mentioned the uh, the abuses and misuses of those technologies. Uh, but I, I sense way less uh, uh, pushback and uh, and also like yeah skepticism or or cynicism. Uh, I think a lot of people increasingly in governments, in academia, uh, in international organizations, uh, really want to like jump in and see how they could um, how they could be part of it. And I think uh, also one one risk is also the the missed use uh, of those uh, data and technology and and and. For those of us who have children, so those that I call the, the data generation, uh, I think we have a responsibility to shape um, the, the future of this ecosystem in ways that uh, will benefit them. Uh, so it's not not using those data uh, and tools, but it's using them uh, in ways that will be beneficial for them and not harm also the, the environment. Well, it's definitely been beneficial for us to have you here in the studio. Thank you very much for joining us, and we look forward to catching up with you again soon, perhaps at another one of these events. Thank you. Thank you.